I think it's everything. Diversity is, is everything in life. It's what makes me happy and I think humans need that. I mean, we thrive on that. There's something that's instilled in us. We know the importance of, of biodiversity. I hope, I hope we know that. What if playing a computer game about restoring landscapes enabled real-world conservation? I wanted to make a strategy game, but a game that was about making nature instead of making cities. Creating this, this really soft, warm hug of a game that, that makes you feel better for being in it. This is a story about a group of game designers from Free Lives in South Africa, guided and educated along the way by experts from the Endangered Wildlife Trust, who set out to discover the real-world inspiration behind their digital planet restoration game, Terra Null, and the magic of the natural world. From the beginning, when the studio greenlit the project, the team were very upfront with me about when the time comes, we want to partner with an environmental organization and donate a portion of the proceeds. And that was that, because no one disagreed. The Angel Wildlife Trust is an organization that represents species conservation on the ground and at the coal face. And there realistically aren't very many of those. Yeah, there they are. See on that rock slope there? We're 50 years old this year, which is pretty cool. We've had massive impact across Southern Africa into East Africa. Let's see if we can get a bit closer. And the three sort of pillars that we focus on are saving species, conserving habitat and benefiting people. The EWT's Carnival Conservation Program is one of the flagship programs with the Cheetah Project being sort of the start of it. Their role in the ecosystem is, is very important. They, they keep prey populations healthy. Currently, South Africa is the only country in the world apart from Malawi with an increasing cheetah population. And that's largely due to the efforts that we've gone to. I'm always amazed at, at what we can do on the amount of funding that, that we bring in. Sure, we're nearly 100 projects, 120 staff members working in 21 countries. It's passion and just We've got so much to do and so little time. The people that are, by choosing to play Terranor, directly choosing to contribute to conservation as we know it. I'm hoping that people will see the insane work that these guys are doing and that the community will feel really good about the role that they got to play in that. Zzz. Although from the outside the game seems to have this very strong identity, as corny as this sounds, that identity emerged organically. Having an opportunity to work on a game that really resonated with people emotionally was really meaningful. And, oh, there's our hawk. There's one in that tree. There he goes. Are you kidding? A really big part of making Terranol is it's a fantasy. It's inspired by real world conservation techniques or real world natural phenomena, but then abstracted and made to work within the mechanics of the game. When we design things for Terra Null, we do like at the real world, but we're also like, all right, well, there actually is no such thing as a toxin scrubber, but supposing it existed, what might it look like? There are a lot of a lot of things in the game that are far more complicated in the real world. Impossibly more complicated. <laughs> Nature is actually designed to, to fix if we enable it. We have to be smart about how we explain that everything is linked. 
the biggest challenge of conserving the ocean is just the scale of what has to be done and the speed at which it's going to need to be done. And it's all connected that the water cycle which the ocean drives affects all of us inland or by the coastline. And that's why we have to protect the ocean. Most of us will understand that if we don't have intact ecosystems, life can't thrive and life can't provide. This is what the poachers carry. There's plenty of game coming around here. So this is why the poachers put the snares here. They say only 10 years time before the rhinos is extinct. And then what's next? Elephant? What's next? Buffalo? What's next? We need the sources and we need the help to prevent this. We can try to keep as close together as possible. Also watch where you put your feet. Don't stand on any kind of dead logs or anything like that. See him there? Yeah. Straight through. You guys see? When I'm monitoring by myself to get a good visual to check for like what are roots or birds. I'll often try and climb a tree and then break branches to try and get them to come in underneath you. For a country that is in the throes of massive development, we as conservationists in this era have the opportunity to make the biggest difference in conservation and make sure that the, the biodiversity that we are so fortunate to house is retained for the long term. That was very, very cool, but also very scary. If more brands in general harness their own community's collective willingness to make things better, we could induce actual change. I do feel like it is really important to be hopeful about things. Where you are working on rejuvenating a world, um, I think it's just such a powerful theme and it's one that, that I think a lot of people can relate to. When the reach that, that this sort of game can, can give to the globe, it's a new group of people which is, which is really exciting. It, it just highlights, you know, South Africa's got problems but look at what, what we have to offer and look at how much we can we can actually do with, with this sort of support and awareness. To figure out what it is that drives you to act. If fear is a thing that allows you to act, then great, let's be afraid. But if fear cripples you, then let's find hope. <laughs>